all, Farmer Jesse here. So I'm at market the other day and several customers in a row asked me, did we get flooded out um, this week? And I, I was like, what? I remember it raining. I do remember that. Uh, rained pretty hard a couple times. Um, but it didn't affect anything. Like we harvested, we planted, we did some soil prep, nothing changed on our farm because it was raining. And I start, I realized rain's kind of this thing that I like no longer really pay attention to, unless we're not getting it. If we're not getting it, then it's important. But in terms of excess rain, we haven't really had any issues with it lately. And so I realized I've stopped thinking about rain that much. And I also realized there have been a lot of things that have changed about our farm since going no-till. So today, I kind of want to talk about some of those things. So let's do it. First things first, if you are not subscribed to this channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you are subscribed, you're awesome. Here's the thing, a little background. This is Rough Draft Farmstead. This is my home farm. This is kind of, you know, the home place for no-till growers. My wife and I started out as tillage farmers. So we kind of have gone through the whole gamut from sort of, you know, ecological tillage, lots of cover crops and those sorts of things. And we kind of went into more of a minimal tillage system uh, where we only used it where we felt like we needed to. And now we don't, I don't even know where my tiller, where is my tiller? I genuinely don't know where my tiller is. So we don't use those kind of tools anymore. We really don't use much of anything beyond like a stirrup hoe, sometimes a broad fork if we feel like the soil is compacted. And the first real big difference is that rain thing. Uh, we don't in the middle of the spring, we can plant in the middle of the winter. We can plant early in the spring. We don't have to wait for moisture levels. That's, we've got good moisture levels pretty much at all times. We did get affected a little bit by the drought, but one thing you need to know about going no-till is it's not instantaneous. Like when you go no-till, your garden problems don't just immediately go away. It's a process. So you still have to build that organic matter and all those good channels in the soil, but we're slowly doing that. And to the point that when I heard that we got five and a half inches of rain or something this week, and we hadn't even noticed it, I was like, oh, that's a big step for us. And that's a massive change from when we were tillage farming. The other thing is that the soil itself has just changed. I'm gonna talk about interplanting here in a second, but the soil itself, like, I can just dip my fingers really far into the soil. It smells better, it feels better, and by smell, I mean, you can smell when soil is good and you can smell when it's anaerobic and it's very fresh and sweet now. Um, I can dip my hands into it, the tilth is really nice. And that's just a product of not bashing all of those aggregates with a tiller all the time. And allowing, you know, the roots to stay in the soil and the fungal matter to kind of uh, occupy it and the worms to build holes through it. Um, all those things, all of those things are really important. So that's kind of what we've been doing. But no-till also asks you to question like why you don't till. And the big reason we don't till is because we want healthy soil. Why do you want healthy soil? You want healthy soil to increase your crop productivity, to increase the health of it, the flavor of it, the look of it, the, you, you wanna reduce your disease pressure and your pest pressure and all of those things, right? So that doesn't just come from not tilling. With that, you have to do some of the other things like cover crops. We've done a lot more cover crops. I just mowed this cover crop here and planted a bunch of sweet corn into it. Here's that sweet corn transplanted into the cover crop. This is the future sweet potato patch and it was all under cover crop. This back here is cover crop that's under clear plastic. All of the tomatoes and peppers were planted into a cover crop. These are potatoes that were planted into a cover crop. So yeah, just a lot more cover cropping and a lot more living roots to maximize photosynthesis. Another big change for us is we just don't really do much cultivation um, anymore. There's a little bit. I used to do probably almost a full day's worth every single week. And when we were tillage farmers, because you're bringing up all those weed seeds and you, ha and, you know, nature wants to cover the soil. It doesn't want bare soil. So we, you know, we used to do a lot more cultivation and now we do it, I say about every 10 days, I do one morning where I just really go after it and find all the weeds that I wanna get rid of. Um, part of that is also that my relationship to weeds has changed. Um, there are certain weeds I just don't worry about. Uh, sorrel, for instance. Uh, you know, I try and cultivate it if I can, but I'm not gonna fret about it. I will, there's other weeds like Johnson grass or you know, maybe like a spidey amaranth or something, I will literally drop this camera and go pull it out of the soil. But this is, you know, we haven't spent any time cultivating this and there's very few weeds. There's a little bit in the pathways maybe, but, but that's been an, an enormous time saver for us. So this picture that you're looking at right now is almost from 
exactly three years ago today. And you can see our gardens were bigger when we were doing more tillage. Um, they were, uh, they kind of had to be because we had more crop loss and we needed more space. Um, and you can see there's a lot of dirt. There's just dirt everywhere. And now if you look at this one taken this week, um, there's no dirt. There's zero dirt. The brown stuff is cover crop that is mowed um, or the lighter brown stuff is actually just mulch from last, compost mulch from last year that's been sun bleached. But um, zero, there's almost, as you can see, there's, there's just nothing uncovered in our entire garden. It's all under a mulch or a cover crop or something like that. And I should say another thing that's, that's definitely changed about our farm is we were able to shrink it partly because our crop performance was a little bit better, uh, but also partly because we've started thinking more about soil biology and creating healthy soil by interplanting. So that's one way, right? The cover crops are one way, but also interplanting. Like for instance, here's a bunch of them. This is tomatoes planted into lettuce, peppers with celery and celeriac. This is alyssum coming up, some of our main season field tomatoes. This is echinacea with alyssum and field tomatoes. There's a handful of those plants that's a little bit more experimental. Here's strawberry plant into lettuce. Green onions coming up under zucchini. Yellow squash and carrots. Head lettuce in the beans. Beets and peppers and lettuce. So yeah, almost every single bed in our farm, on our farm, is interplanted. And the reason for that is maximizing space, but also maximizing photosynthesis. Uh, if we have gaps, I talked about this in a previous video, but we put in, um, like if we have gaps in carrot germination, we'll put stuff in there, like head lettuce. Um, another thing, we started planting perennials into our garden. So this is a little messy at the moment, but like I said, I kind of ignore the soil. Um, blueberries with strawberries. Blueberries, strawberries, those are parsnips. Parsnips are not interplanted, but I left the sorrel growing to act as a secondary crop there. So yeah, that's been a massive change, like maximizing our photosynthetic activity by increasing the number of crops. Okay. So like, here's another one. Uh, Oh, the ladybugs, lots of ladybugs, sunflowers, green onions, head lettuce. But like I said, not every problem goes away. We still, uh, we had, an ep we are in the middle of an epic battle with aphids in our tunnel um, on a new plot that we opened up that I fear maybe had too much nitrogen. Uh, you know, we still get some disease. We'll probably end up with some early blight this year. We always do. Those things have been going down too. Like we haven't had any slug issues this year. Last year we didn't have any harlequin beetles. We just stopped treating stuff. So we don't spend any time spraying. We don't use any, even Omri approved anything. You know, cause when you use something like that, you may solve the pest in the short term, but you decrease the population of beneficials in the long term. So it's been our strategy. I, I can't, I don't say go do that, but that's worked for us. And then there are just other physical changes, like we've added birdhouses. So we've seen more bluebirds and tree swallows. We've also seen a lot more barn swallows and um, phoebes and other birds of prey, if you're an insect. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm gonna go eat breakfast. Uh, if you have any questions about that, let me know. Like this video if you like this video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Hit the subscribe button. Yeah, happy to fill in any details. Happy to hear your sort of experiences with no-till. I love my comment section. So fill it up with some good stuff. All right, see y'all later.